as I started getting comments on my recent video about my favorite anime studios, I wondered if I shouldn't have done more with the video. The old spare commented that maybe if I did a top 10 the Mad House or Mappa might be in there, and then Malaf mentioned A1 and make me wonder where exactly those would place on a top studios list. So I decided to do a bit of research looking into this and make a follow up addressing these comments in addition to expanding this to a top 10 list. But not just that, I've decided to be super objective with this. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to break out your graphing calculators and algebra textbooks. We're doing math, because any results derived through numbers must be factually correct. So the way I'm going to rank these studios is to take the average score of all series and movies that I've seen from them that aired at least in part since uh, 2014. I'm also only going to look at studios that have done at least three shows in that time to avoid these uh, studios that only make one anime and then disappear off the face of the earth. To recognize quality along with quantity, I'm also going to give each studio a small boost for anything that I liked enough to complete and along with anything I've considered good that came out in this time. I'm also going to give a small boost for anything they've done great, either recently or in the past, just to recognize the prestige that some of these studios have. I also put it in an Excel document down in the description so you can see how I did all this. So let's get on with this revised list. Number 10, Production IG. This is one that I actually did not expect to be in the top 10 because they really haven't done that much of note lately. But because of they have not done all that much lately, they have also not really done anything bad lately, so that helps them not to have a really low score. The one show that they do have that I like is Haikyuu, and they seem to be really known for sports anime lately with that and Kuroko, though I haven't seen that one. And they also did Attack on Titan Junior High, which was a fun parody, so yeah, uh, more good than bad I guess. And so they're on the list. Yeah, not too much to say overall with this. But, so, moving on. Number 9, White Fox. Another studio that really hasn't done much lately, but most of what they've done has been at least okay. ReZero is the most remarkable show they have, and really the only one I, I can talk much about that's come out recently. They did have styles get in the past, but that wasn't quite enough to be considered great, at least in my opinion. So yeah, I also have a habit of not finishing their shows, so I should go fix that. It's not like they're bad, it's just they kind of lose my interest, or i not really sure I want to keep going, and then I just never pick it back up. Anyway, number 8, Gonzo. Gonzo used to be one of the most ambitious anime studios out there making things like Welcome to the NHK, Barcarano, and Red Garden. While not all these shows were able to live up to their potential, I did like them for at least trying to be something different, but then lately it seems like they've only been doing like slice of life anime which don't interest me all that much, though so your life is a quite notable exception for the genre. This season they changed things up with 18F, which is probably the most unique show this season, so yeah, that's a plus for them. Hopefully it'll still be interesting, even though it's kind of hard to tell this early if it'll be good or not, or even what the story actually is. But still, off to a good start, and I'm hoping they'll continue to make more shows like this. Now, number seven, we have A1 Pictures. And yeah, the studio certainly makes more anime than any of the others, at least in the past few years, with them having 20 shows that I've at least seen part of since 2014. And really, they are a bit of a mixed bag, though in 2016, they did have several good shows which impressed me, even if they keep missing a shot at being great, either through a messy ending, or as being incomplete, or running out of animation budget or something. They may not be the best studio, but they do have a good balance of quality and quantity, so that's a good thing, and enough to be on my list. Now moving on to number 6, Madhouse. And this is a case where I spoke too soon with my past video when I said they hadn't done much lately to excite me. It is true that they might not be making as many great shows as they did in the past, but they still they did One Punch Man in Parasite, which I liked. And even the shows I don't care for as much, I can still praise for being different and just not completely boring. Because, yeah, I found lots of shows boring if you have. Madhouse is still good, maybe not the best, but enough to be pretty high on the list. And now number five, Sunrise. Most studios seem to have some type of core identity in the for the shows that they tend to do mostly, but in Sunrise's cases, they have two very different identities. The first is the mostly serious Gundam shows, and then they have the lighthearted shows with comedy. And the lighthearted ones are the ones that tend to get the high marks for me, with Kintama and Love Light being their most well-known ones, though Classic Lloyd is another fun comedy that I want to see more of. Maybe if I go back and watch more of Iron Blooded Orphans or Gundam Origin, I'll have more to say about their serious shows as well. Number four, Lurche. Well, my list did not change too much here. And most of what I said about Lurche still applies. They're good at making shows that appeal to me by pushing characters to their limit and seeing how they function in difficult and often violent situations. But one of the things I like about these shows is how they still have a message of hope in them. Of course, not everything they've done I like, with their fan service being the most obvious choice, and I also found Rampo Keaton to be too much of a mess to really praise much, though I did like some of the themes and the style was cool there. And yeah, now I want to go watch more of the Classroom of the Elite to see if it ends up being one of the shows I like along with their others, though I'm kind of skeptical here. Number 3, 3HZ. I'm glad the studio is still number 3 because it fits with their name of being 3. Yeah, I appreciate that. Though, again, not much to say here that I haven't before. Everything they've done I liked, and while they might not have done anything amazing yet, their constant quality puts them above, well, everyone else I've talked about so far. Yeah, uh, go watch their anime, I think you'll like them. And number two, Bones. Again, same as before, Bones is great, and I was actually a little bit surprised that Bones wasn't the top studio on my list with all the great shows they've done lately, but they've had some not-so-great shows as well, and the fact that they tend not to end shows really limits how high of a score I can give them. 
And then there was Snow White and the Red Hair, which I really didn't care for after one episode. The people tell me it's good, so maybe I should go back to it. What do you guys think? Anyway, we move on to number one, which is Trigger. And again, really anticlimactic, especially if you know me. Trigger's score really is helped by their mostly consistent quality. Even most of what they do, I would not consider amazing. Though they do have Kill a Kill, which is the only 10 I've given out in for a recent anime. So that definitely helps them. I am glad to say that they're number one here because that proves that even the math agrees and I'm not just a blind to trigger fanboy because math is always right. Granted, the math is my formula combined with my scores, but thinking too much about this would just go against the anti-logic that trigger embodies. So that's my new and updated list. I actually had more fun making this list than you might expect with all these calculations. The Excel spreadsheet I used is in the description, so feel free to go to that if you want more information about how I did this. And if you want to know why I gave a show a certain score, you can ask. Or if it's from last year, I probably talked about it in my top 100 anime of 2016 video. And yeah, I don't think my opinions on anything there have changed too much. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.